Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back for, to another Hizzy lesson. This lesson we're focusing on ancient Egypt. I didn't bring up our learning intentions in our success criteria. This lesson might be a little bit smaller because I might ask you guys to go back and have another look at everything that we covered this lesson. Some of the things might be a little bit confusing the first time through. So please feel free to go back and rewatch the video and look at everything that we covered. What I'm going to ask of you guys today is um, ancient Egypt questions. I'm going to ask you to write first rule, rule a margin on your page. Actually, yep, rule a margin on your page. Write the date. What did I do? Yeah, control J. Rule a margin on your on your um, page. Write the date in the top corner. And I'm going to ask you to write these out. Questions and answer. It's only four questions that we're working on today. And if you miss something in the video or you struggle to answer any of these questions, please feel free to go back and have another look through what we spoke about today. Question one. What is the name of the river that runs through Egypt? Question two. Describe the area surrounding Egypt. Question three. What happened to the river every year? And question four. What did this help the people with? So what did question three's event help the people with? If you need a bit of extra time writing down your answers, pause the video so that it's still up there. But we're going to move on to our PowerPoint. So when we have a look at ancient Egypt, the river dominates or takes over most of the way the, that the Egyptian people look at the world. The Egyptian Egypt as a country is and was surrounded by a desert with an occasional oasis. An oasis is a small patch in the desert that has a little bit of water and it might have a couple of palm trees. But what do we know about a desert? It's mostly sandy, dry, with no water and no source of life. So if you're stuck in the desert, it's going to be very hard to survive. So what does the um, river provide Egypt with? It gives them some trade. It gives them something to work from. They use the river, the Nile River, for farming. The desert keeps the Egyptian people safe from invasion and it makes them, it gives them a feeling of safety because most armies would really struggle to come from other countries to try and take over Egypt because of the big deserts that separates them from the other countries. And it preserves artifacts because it keeps them safe from a lot of the things that would damage some of these other, uh, some of the artifacts. And Herodotus gave us the quote that said, Egypt is the gift of the Nile. So the Nile River, or this river here, gave us the gift of Egypt. So when we look at Egypt, Egypt is, as we looked at last lesson, in, on the, con in the continent of Africa. And the Nile River runs right through. So when we look at there being a big desert here, and a big desert here, there's not much land there. There's not much green. But over here, we have Egypt. And, whoop, and the life that the Nile River provides with it. And here we have a closer view of Egypt. We have the Mediterranean Sea, just at the top here. And we have the Red Sea. With the Eastern Desert and the Western Desert. Because the eastern desert is on the east side of Egypt, and the west desert is on the west side. Now when we look at Egypt, the top part that connects to the Mediterranean Sea is called Lower Egypt. And if we have a look on the map, here we have the orange triangle in our legend here tells us that these are the major pyramid sites. And we have the major pyramid sites of Egypt and Saqqara inside of Lower Egypt. And then as we move further south on the map, we have Upper Egypt over here. 
and some other ancient sites, we have Memphis, Amana, Der, Der El Bahari, Thebes, Afia. We're not going to spend a lot of time today looking at the different shades of green, but know that all of these green parts, all the way down to the bottom of our map here, was all di um, different parts of Egypt up to one point. And over here is Canaan or Palestine. So the Nile. Almost every year without fail, it provided a yearly flood. And this meant that it had no concern for soil depletion. And what we mean by that is, when one plot of land is farmed for too long, that land loses all of the nutrients and it becomes really hard to grow good crops in there. But because the river floods every year, so the river comes up, covers all that part of the land in water, and then it drops back down. So it fills the land with nutrients. It makes it rich with water. And it makes it a really good soil to grow their crops in. It was very predictable. It gave all of the Egyptian farmers the ability to look at what they were going to do and plan in advance. When the crop comes, I'm going to plant this here and that there, and I'm going to take care of it every day. And it gave them a system of irrigation, a way that they could move water from one place to another. This encouraged trade. When we look at Egypt, it let them trade with different countries. It gave them things that they could grow or things that they could produce from the Nile River with its help. And it gave them something that they could trade with the other countries to make a bit of extra money off. Communication. It let them talk and explain what was going on to the other people. It gave them the ability to, exp um, to communicate with each other, to build a sense of political unity, to build a sense of community, because they all relied on the river, and they all needed to help each other to live their best lives. And this is an image of the Nile. Now, when we look here, again, this is a fairly new image, as we can see the big boat here. Well, not big boat, but the boat here. <laughs> when we look at the Nile, we need to understand how important and how impressive it is that we have this big giant body of water flowing right through the middle of a desert where there is no water there is there are very very few trees we have this big body of water flowing through keeping people safe and keeping people healthy and this is what it looks like we don't get any view of the deserts on either side but we can see how green it is and to understand that this greenery is alive right in the middle of a desert helps us focus on all of the amazing things that the Nile River allowed the Egyptian civilization, the Egyptian people to develop into. Here we can see some people on their boats and some farmers just on the side of the river. And how did the Nile impact religion? It divided life. It gave them a look of living and dying. The east side, where the sun rose, is the land of the living. It's where they had their cities and their temples. And the west side is where they believed was the land of the dead, where all of their tombs were. When we look at the tombs, so this is where, um, where the Egyptian people would... Oh, I'm going to... Sorry about that. This is where the Egyptian people would bury their dead. So um, it started off with Matra beans, I think that's how it's pronounced, where they would bury a person underground in a small cavern. And then it moved towards the gigantic pyramids where all of the pharaohs and the important people were buried. So I'm going to ask you guys. I've uploaded some worksheets on the Google Classroom. We've had a small discussion on the Nile River and on ancient Egypt. I want you guys to complete those worksheets. If you can't print them off, don't stress. I want you to write your answers in your workbooks in the order that they appear in the worksheets. For the ones that are closed passages, I want you to write one, two, three, list all the numbers for all of the spaces, and then write the words in to where they fit. If you're struggling with any of the work or need any extra help, please feel free to ask me or any of your other teachers email us or contact us through the Google Classroom. I hope you guys are doing well. 
and I'll see you next time.